Hello everybody, this is Carbon Killed the Cat and welcome to your 26th Lua tutorial. In this video we'll be going over giving tables to Lua from C as function parameters and getting tables from Lua. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change our Lua program a little. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the message parameter because we're going to change this function to print all the values of x which is now a table or it will be a table. So we'll change this to the size of x and we'll change this to print x at position i. And we can get rid of the return value because those were from the last video. And now our little program's good. So now we have to change the C program a little. We can get rid of these parameters because we'll be using new ones. And we'll change Lua P call. So we got rid of the return values, so now it has zero return values. So we change the second parameter to zero. And it also only has one parameter, the function, so we'll change this to one. So now we actually have to create the table so that we can use it, use it as a parameter for the function. So the first step is pretty simple. We call a function called Lua underscore new table and it just takes the Lua state L. So what this function does is it creates a new empty table and pushes it onto the stack at negative one. So this is our negative first value on the stack right now until we add new values. The next thing we have to do is we have to actually get values into the table so that they can be pushed into the Lua function that we're calling with Lua p call. So let's create the values in C. We'll create an array call it data has to be an array and we'll just say 10 20 and 30 so now we're going to create a for loop that will get the values in the array into this empty table that we have on the stack so we'll say for int i equals 0 i is less than 3 i plus plus Next we have to get our data onto the stack. So remember that all tables in Lua work in key value pairs. So every index at the table in the table has a key and a value. Now in most tables the keys are just numbers, so it'll be one, two, three, and so on. But some tables you can have a string key like I don't know, map or value, whatever you want. And I'll go over how to do that later but for now let's just use our number values like we have in our array so we push the key first so we'll say lua underscore push number somewhere in here here it is and we give it the lua state as always and then we give it i plus one and we're giving it i plus one because in c plus plus Arrays start at 0, so 10 is at index 0 in the array, 20 is at index 1, and 30 is at index 2. But Lua tables start at index 1. We've gone over this before, but I'll go over it again because this may seem confusing. So when we have these values in the Lua table, 10 will be at position 1, 20 will be at position 2, and 30 will be at position 3. So we just add 1 to i each time because it's offset by 1 in Lua. So that's how you push the key. And then next we have to push the value. So this is easier. We just say Lua push number. And you can also use push of any kind of value here if you have string values in your table or Boolean values or anything. So again, you just give it the Lua state. And now we'll give it data at position i. So this is pretty self-explanatory. We're just pushing... Uh, what value data has at position i currently in the for loop. So now we have to add this key value pair to our table that we pushed onto the stack. So, oops, I put a slash there by accident. So we call a new function called lua underscore set table. And this takes two parameters. It takes the lua state and it takes the index in the stack where the table is. So our table is at negative 3 right now because when we declared it, it got pushed in at negative 1. 
Then we have this number, so this number is now negative 1, and this is pushed back to negative 2. And then we declare another number and push it onto the stack, so this is at negative 1, this is at negative 2, and this is all the way back at negative 3. So what Lewis set table is doing is it's going back to negative 3 on the stack, and then it's taking negative 2 on the stack, and it's using it as the key for the place in the table, and then it's going to negative 1 on the stack, and it's using that value as the value for the table. So now we've pushed our index 1, 2, and 3, because we're doing this three times, and we have our values 10, 20, and 30. So now our table is fully filled out and ready to be used by the function. So before we run our program, just one last thing I want to talk about with Lewis set table. So once set table is done with the key and value, once it's put them into the table that you've specified in the parameter, once it's done with those values, then it pops them from the stack. And what that means is it calls the function Lua underscore pop, which takes the Lua state and an index. We're not actually, we're not actually going to run the program with this function in, but just to show you how it works. So this function, what it does, it goes to this index in the stack, and it gets rid of it. So whatever value was at negative 2 on our stack in this program will be gone. And any values on the stack with a higher positive value, so like what I mean by positive value is we get this global, this is 1, and then this would be 2, this would be 3, so it would take negative 2, and in, then the value 3 on the stack would kind of fall down to take its place. So now 3 would be 2, and if there was a 4, that would be 3, and so on. And if this is confusing to you, think of it as a stack of books or CDs or something. If you take, a, if you take something out of the middle of a stack, then assuming the stack doesn't just fall over, all the things above the thing you took out on the stack would fall down to take the place of the thing you took out. That was kind of a confusing analogy, but hopefully it made sense. But anyway, that's just what happens to these two values once you call Lewis set table. They're just deleted from the stack, and any values on top of them fall down to take its place. Now that I've explained that, we can run the program. So we get 10, 20, 30, and then these two zeros are because I never got rid of this output here. If we get rid of that, and close this, and then we run it again, then we just get 10, 20, 30. So all the values from our data array were passed into Lua through this function and printed out with this command. So one last thing before we get to getting tables from Lua. If you're using string, keys instead of number keys like we use here. You can get rid of this and use a function called Lua underscore set field. Field, I believe. Nope. Lua underscore set field. And this takes three parameters. The first two are the same. The Lua state, obviously. The index of the table you want to set the value of, and it would be negative 2 because we got rid of this. And then finally the index. So this has to be a pointer to a constant char, and let's just say value here for an example. And what this does is it sets the table, uh, it would be the new table here that we set in this case. It sets the table you st specify here at the index, at this index, so the string value. So we're using string keys again here. And then it sets it to the negative 1 value on the stack, which would be data at position i. So this, m actually, no, it wouldn't print it out. This program would still work, but it wouldn't print any of this out. Or it wouldn't print the 10, 20, 30 out because they have string values. So that's just an alternative way to do this if you're using string values. The other way still works for string values too. Just use... Lua underscore push string and you know how to put the parameters in. Just use push string instead of push number if you want to do it that way. 
So now let's move on to getting tables from Lua into C. So we're going to get rid of this function, say goodbye, it served us well, and we're going to make a table called data. And this program is going to pretty much do the exact opposite that our old, that the program we have written now does. It's going to get this data table from Lua and then print it out in C. So we're going to have our 10, 20, and 30 again. And that's all the program will have. So we're going to get rid of the majority of this. Everything but opening the Lua state, doing the file, and closing it. And then we have to get our data variable. So Lua gets global. And we give it data as a parameter. Then we're going to create an empty array. We'll call it data as well. We need to give it a type name. So data. And that's all we need to do for the declaration. So now we're going to create a for loop that will get the values of data in Lua and set them to the values of data in C. Or it will get the values of data in Lua and give them to the data array in C. So we'll create the for loop for int i equals zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. So just like last time, the first thing we have to do is push our key. So we say lua underscore push somewhere here, it's not push number, and we give it l lua state and we give it i plus one just like last time and then we call another new function called lua underscore get table and we give this the lua state and the table we want to get and that is our data table that we have on the stack at negative two now because this is taking the negative one spot so we have negative two and then we will just say data at position i equals lua underscore two number l and negative one oops so in case you're confused what we're doing here is we're getting the table data with lua dot get global or lua underscore get global and then we're using a for loop to execute this code three times, obviously. And we're pushing the key that we want to get in our data table. And then we're actually getting our data table at that key. So we're getting data at position i plus one, which will be one, then two, then three. So we'll get 10, then 20, then 30. And what get table does is it uh, it looks for the table specified at negative 2. It'll check if it's a table and otherwise return an error. And then if it is a table, then it will look for negative 1 on the stack. And it will use negative 1 on the stack as the key for the table. And it will search the table for that. It will search the table at that key. And it will push the value that it gets at that key onto the stack. So then and it'll be on the stack at negative 1. So then we just set data at position i to our negative one position on the stack. And we have to set it to a number, obviously. The last thing we have to do before this program is complete is we have to do some resetting. So Lua get table pushes a number onto the stack. And again, we set that number to data at position i. But for this code to work properly again in the next run of the for loop, we have to either get rid of that number or get our data table back to negative one on the stack because this code assumes that data is already at position negative one so that when we push a number in it'll be at negative two and then it'll be at negative two when we call get table because that's where we're assuming it is at this call so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call a new function called lua underscore set top and this takes the Lua state and an index. And what this function does is it takes whatever index in the stack you give it, we'll give it negative two, which is the 
position that the table is on the stack at this point in the code. So it takes whatever values at this index on the stack and it brings it to negative one. So this properly resets it so that our data table is back to negative one on the stack when the for loop completes. So if we run this, we get 10, 20, 30, and we have gotten the 10, 20, 30 from Lua, and we have X printed it out in C. So that's all for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'm not quite sure what we'll do, but I'll think of something by next week. And uh, a lot of you probably want to know how to use uh, two-dimensional or three-dimensional tables with this, but that is a lot messier and more complicated, so we'll get to that later. So see you in the next video.